Hey everybody, welcome to Today I Learned in R Programming. I'm Andrew Gard from Equitable Equations. I'm here with Greg Martin from R Programming 101, among other places. And uh, in this uh, segment, we like to share things that we have learned in R along our continuing journey. How you doing, Greg? I haven't seen you in a while. How have you been? Good. It's been too long. I've missed doing these sessions with you because I always learn something, which is great. Same here. Uh, I've been, I've been good. I've been good. I had a, a chest infection recently, but I'm over that, so I'm back, healthy, yeah. kicking about. So all, all, all's well on the side of the Atlantic. Um, how have you been, Andrew? I'm doing well, thanks. The, you know, I've known a lot of people that have been sick one way or another, either with the sort of newer COVID or colds or or infections like that. I'm glad you're doing better. Yeah, um, I am right now teaching my teenage my teenager how to drive. That's my sort of interesting adventure right now. And <laughs> and the teenager is doing great, but I'm freaking out about it a little bit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I can imagine. So, I can well yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's something you'll a joy you'll have with your kids at some point. And I tell you. It's, it's a right. parenting adventure. By the way, Andrew, I, I have actually been watching a couple of your videos on your YouTube channel. So I've been enjoying oh. that because I'm trying to create some teaching content on a linear regression yeah. and your teaching content in that space is absolutely delicious. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, It's been really, really helpful. So I've been, I've been kind of like looking at your videos quite carefully saying, Thanks. ah, that's how it works. Sort of, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's surprisingly complicated. I find. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, there's um, a lot of nuance to linear regression. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree with that. So um, please, everybody in the audience, check that out and make sure you check out Greg's channel at R Programming 101. Lots of great uh, R and stats content in both these places. And, um, and if you're watching this on my channel, go and check out Andrew's channel, Equitable Equations. Excellent resource, highly recommended. Double so um, today we were going to talk about Quarto a little bit, right, Greg? Yeah. You want to yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. start us off and show us something? Love Quarto. I'm going to share my screen. And for people that don't know, Quarto is kind of like the updated version of R Markdown. So a lot of you will have worked in R Markdown before, which basically is an opportunity to do R coding or to use, it's not just R actually, now you can use Python, you can use all sorts of things, but uh, build into it the text around a document that you might be creating. So um, here you can see in front of me, actually, this is a lesson that I'm, I'm building up for a lesson that I'm going to do on YouTube. And you can see in the first instance, this looks a little bit more like a word processor than, you know, than a, a coding session. And it, in, in actual fact, in a lot of ways, it is just like a word processor because I've just got regular old text here. I can choose what, you know, is what kind of, what kind of text it is. I can, I can insert things like pictures, diagrams, tables, et cetera, et cetera, change the formatting. Yeah. So in every way I'm working in an environment of like kind of what you see is what you get, which is lovely. And this is the difference between Quarto and Markdown. Whereas in Markdown, you needed to put in like, you know, hashtags and things to kind of tell it that this is a heading or a double heading or, you know, uh, now it's really is you kind of make the text, you know, look like you want the output to look like. And then Inside of that, you can pop in some code. You put in these chunks and it's quite nice because you can put this chunk in here so that either it will just insert the output of the, ch the chunk, like now I just want this, this figure in the text, but I don't necessarily want, well, in this, in, in, in this case, actually, I am letting the audience see the code because this is a sort of lesson that's gonna be in an output. But if we scroll up here, here I've got some code library tidyverse and i don't want that to be in the, the final document when i render so i put this little instruction at the top saying echo equals false uh, and messages equals false and it's not going to include in this case either the, the code itself and then sometimes as you run the codes you know r produces some messages sometimes errors you can tell that chunk not to include any of that hoopla and if you go down a little bit here you can see i've done a similar thing i've said messages is false errors false, warnings false. I don't want any of that stuff to pop up in the final document. All I want in this particular instance is the code and the output of the code. And sometimes you could have just the output. So just a diagram inserted mm -hmm. into your document. On the side here, I've got, you know, I've got the different sections which you can click through, which is quite nice. So it's a very, very clean environment to work in. It's super easy. Um, you can have page breaks. You can, you can have, uh, uh, tables, figures, references. I mean, you can do just about anything that you could do in in a Word document. You could do in this, um, but.
but you can also add in you know all of this extra all of these ex all of the extra stuff you can do with code at the beginning of the document you can actually define what the output will be so you have got format doc dot x so that means when i click this button here render this whole thing is going to turn into a word document i could make that a pdf um I, you know so there's a number of formats that this i haven't i've used word documents and pdfs that's all i've done so far but i know there are a couple of other opportunities so um any comments, Andrew, anything important that I'm not saying in terms of a, a very brief introduction to Quarto? That you I love it. I think that uh, it's been, it's really, the flexibility is amazing, both in terms of um, what you're including, what you're showing, and the, the formatting options. I guess one thing I might mention that I love about it is that it's... Um, when it was built by uh, by Posit, they really stressed making it compatible with Markdown. And so if you just sort of copy and paste your Markdown stuff into a Quarto document that you're working on, it's going to run almost certainly. Oh, and, I didn't know and, that. And that means that sort of pretty much everything you've learned about Markdown still, still applies here. So if you do have you, um, some of that been formatting. working out, and creating stuff in Markdown over years, because a lot of people have, yeah. switching over to Quarto is a hop, skip, and a jump. It, it's, it, easy. it's yeah, it's sort of built with you in mind in that case, because, nice. you know, like you, most people or a lot of our users come in with that markdown knowledge. And so maybe the big obstacle to jump into Quarto is thinking, well, why did well, I don't want to start over? But you're actually not, which is wonderful. Yeah, really nice. Really nice. So I love it. I'm using it all the time now. Um, you know, now that I'm, I'm used to using it, it's like, like I can't imagine working without it. Yeah. Um, but OK, over to you. What are you going to show us today? Yeah, so I want to show you uh, some slides. One thing that I've been enjoying about Quarto is that you can make slide presentations. So, you know, I come from a math background, so I learned originally to make my slides with LaTeX and Beamer. Um, others might be using PowerPoint. And um, lately, I've been making that switch over to Quarto slides. The, the flexibility and power are really wonderful. So I'm going to show you just a tiny bit of that. Uh, let's see here. Let me get to it. There we go. All right, so um, I am going to just start up a new document. I'm going to go to a new Quarto presentation. And uh, I don't know, how about we call this uh, T-I-L-R? And I'm just going to leave the default options for now, make the reveal JS for an HTML presentation. And um, again, you can just hit render, and it should show exactly what we made. You just have to save it, save the actual document that you're rendering. And I will share that screen as well. Give me a second. I'd like you to be able to see that. See the render. So there it is. Right now, it's just very basic. It's the sort of default document that our, um, that Posit gives you that you can just then go in and edit. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, to my R now and actually do some edits. And is that shareable? Is that like an easy to share? HTML. Oh, yeah, that's just an HTML file that you can then email to your friends and export in other formats. Um, you can see here the format I used was the reveal.js. That's the HTML format. Um, and you can customize that in, in many, many different ways. At its root, it's pretty simple. You put the two hashes for the name of the slide. So the first slide I had was titled Quarto. And then you get a bunch of, uh, of text lightly formatted. And you can insert code chunks. Here I'm doing the sort of markdown view, the sort of uh, what they call the source editor, but you can use the visual editor as well that I think you were showing a minute ago, Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that can be uh, can be a wonderful way to go. I think I'm going to stick with the source. You know, so I'm doing these presentations sometimes for class, sometimes for some of my more stats oriented YouTube videos, I want to do slides. And a lot of times in these presentations, I want to have pauses in the middle of my slides. So for instance, with a with a bulleted list like this, I might want to have a pause in between my bullets. Mm -hmm. And so I thought right now I would just show a couple quick ways to do that. One is you can just add um, some options into your formatting um, at the beginning in your, in your header. So I'm going to add a, um, a format option. It's going to be incremental. And I'm just going to set that to true. 
And now I'm going to render it and I'll have to reshare the rendered version. So give it a second here. And now when I get to my bullets, you'll see it hasn't even shown the first bullet. And when I page forward, I can see the first and then the second bullet, which I think is a really nice thing when I'm speaking to students and I don't want to I want to have a chance to talk about some of the content before I show what's next. Andrew, will that incremental, because you put that incremental uh, um, uh, instruction right at the beginning. In other words, yeah. it applies to all of the slides. That's right. And is that specific to bullet points? That is, is specific. It, oh, sorry. It, or is it, it was it any object or any kind of, you know, if you were to have, because, you know, if it wasn't a bullet point, but like an additional paragraph or something, would that, would that be incremental as well? It's a really good question. So the way I just said it, it's going to be um, for bullet points and numbered lists. Okay. Now, what you just asked is, I think, a really good question, because a lot of times you might want to put one paragraph of text and then a pause and then maybe your code with that plot that you showed me, for instance, a minute ago. So I think I'll just show you that really quickly here. Um, so going back to this first slide that we had, I'm going to put in a pause after this paragraph. And the way I'm going to do that is dot, space, dot, space, dot. And then I can put in whatever I want next. So maybe just, I don't know, look, uh, look at my pause. Like, it's like sticking in another pause. And I'll render that. And then I'll reshare. And let's see if this worked. Yep, so there's my, uh, my first slide. Uh -huh. Now, page forward, and you can see, look at my pause. Okay, nice. Yeah. Really and um, there's other options that you can use here for um, for customizing that even further. These are just two that I thought would be good to share in this sort of short form video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, I have also noticed that there are increasingly excellent resources online. You know, and I haven't even had a chance to read through them. But, uh, you know, as I was, I was looking at them briefly before we got together in this call, and I was thinking, wow, there's so much you can do in Quarto. Um, and uh, it's going to be just be like a lovely journey learning. Because, you know, what, once you get to a point where you can kind of do what you want with your data and your manipulation of data and producing uh, nice plots and graphs, you want all of that to translate into good documents, good, or in this case, good presentations that you can use to communicate those results. And this is just such a nice, clean way of doing that. Um, it's yeah, very exciting. I, I agree with that so fully. We, um, you know, when we talk about doing data science, we think about sort of the data reshaping and visualization and, and modeling. But communications, are arguably the most important part yeah. of that. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's fundamentally a human endeavor, not a computer endeavor. And so yeah, exactly. I, mean, I think mastering Quarto is, is um, a really key part as we as we improve I, our I, I think it's kind of an essential skill that people need to lean into and yeah. there's a lot to it there's a lot of nuance there's a lot of power in it so it's actually worth taking the time yeah. taking the trouble and learning about it um i was experimenting recently with you know um cr creating tables uh creating figures and you can yeah. give the figure a name and then refer to the figure at a different point in the document and have it hyperlink back to the figure um i experimented a little bit with even a bibliography at the end of a document yeah it's, and it's i was wonderful. amazed at how easy it was I yeah mean, you, you, you know you, you just create a bibliography and, and there it is and it's That's great you know, referenced and so really really impressive um yeah uh you know for for academic writing and and just for you know presentations yeah. and you, I, um, i'm delighted to learn about this the slide story because i haven't done that and i really yeah. think that that's kind of the next thing that i want to really lean into and learn a lot about you, you mentioned about documentation and how that's coming along. And one thing that's exciting to me is kind of being part of that in a small way. I know you have a you have an introductory Quarto video already that everyone should check out. Um, I'm definitely planning on doing some more um, detailed vids on some of these things as I as I get deeper into it. And so I hope you and I can uh, can help out the R community and the, the data science community in that way with some video yeah. content. Yeah, so. no, no, excited about that. All yeah, right. well, Listen, as always, I've learned a lot from you, Andrew. Um, and you as you well, know, Greg. I, I never have these calls with you where the thing that you teach isn't genuinely something that I wanted to know. So this, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I always get something out of this. It's such a joy learning and then especially learning with other people like you. So great yeah. seeing you, Greg.
and uh, let's, let's talk again soon. It's been too long. Talk again soon. Bye-bye. Take, take care. All the best. Bye.